Hi, I'm Esther McCann, I'm 33 and I'm from Bristol. Growing up, I came from a really strict Christian family and that really governed, every, I think, every decision that was made for me in my life up until I was about 18. But when I was 17, my mum died really unexpectedly in a, like a home accident, effectively. And that really changed the direction of my life. You know, university went off the table. I said that I just needed a time out from that. And I was not making the right decisions. I was having a lot of difficult decisions around money, developed a lot of fear around money. And it all kind of came to a head at the end of my 20s when I ended up getting a divorce because I'd managed to get married very, very quickly <laughs> in my 20s and have a child. But ultimately, was that the most aligned decision I could have made? It was at the time, but it was very much leading to this boiling point, this bubbling up of that things in my life needed to change, things needed to come to the surface. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had absolutely no idea, but I ended up doing a method called the two cup method, which is where you take one glass of water and one that's completely empty, and you're effectively quantum shifting your reality through this water and ingesting it. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just set the intention that I was gonna have a career that was gonna help people, where they were gonna have um, transformation, where I was gonna really touch their lives. Didn't have a clue what that looked like, but I put it out there and very, very quickly, I ended up discovering coaching because I was just doing a law of attraction little course online just because I was interested in it. And at the end it said, did you know you can apply this in a coaching context? And I thought I had no idea about that. And then at the same time, my company that I was working for offered up a coaching qualification and said, we want to train people. So I was able to get in on that to receive coaching trainings, that was purely coincidence. But that really opened a door for me and I, I knew so quickly that I was really passionate about this and this is something I was gonna do. And then I ended up securing my first public speaking gig in London and everything just snowballed. Everything just snowballed from there and I still feel that I'm feeling the effects of doing that exercise and setting that intention asking it is given. I asked the universe and here we are more than three years later and I'm still feeling that on a daily basis which is amazing. And I'd spent so much of my life going through these very miserable repetitive cycles whether it was through men or through money or being let down by people and I started to dissect my past and see that yeah there's something in it that what you continue to believe is true and what you continue to give your focus to is what you attract. So I did end up getting the book Ask and It Is Given. One of my favourite takeaways from the Ask and It Is Given book by Abraham Hicks is the placemat process that she uses. I came across this possibly presented in a different context. So I've ended up calling it my universe to-do list and it's become a bit of a process where I give things to the universe that they need to do. And it's also just a really helpful way to brain dump out all your tasks and things that you need to do for, for the day. You can take a piece of paper and you can split that piece of paper in two. And on one side, you can write down all the things that you can do, that are in your control, working towards your manifestation, or just nice things that you wanna do with your day. Maybe you wanna go for a run, positive choices that you're making for yourself. And then all the things that you can't push, you can't do anymore, you put on the universe's to-do list, that the universe is then gonna take the next step for you. It's going to then make a little bit of momentum and progress and something's going to come back from it. So that could be an email that you're waiting for. And I always write, thank you for, as if it's already been received by the universe and then the thing I want to receive. And one that I can really remember because it just felt so powerful at the time was I split my page off, wrote all my things and I had a cashback thing. It was waiting for 80 pound. I'd been waiting for over nine months for that to come through. It had been declined twice. And I remember looking at it and thinking, wouldn't that be nice to just have that 80 quid? Like, I'd, I, yeah, that would be great. Even though it's saying declined and I'm, I can't speak to anybody about it. So I just wrote on there, thank you for my 80 pounds. Um, and then I just went on and I got went on about my day. I woke up and that money was in my bank account the next morning. And it's little things like that, like you can't explain that 
through logic, but you put that energy out there and you surrender it. I love Oracle cards in particular because I feel they just help you to connect into spirit, particularly if you're new to spirituality. Like if you've got a very developed psychic gift, you'll find yourself at a place where you don't you don't need that anymore because you're receiving the messages and the guidance in such a profound way that you don't really need these external tools. But I think particularly in the beginning, it's such a powerful way to develop your intuition. So it was so great for me to start to go, wow, like there's something going on here and I do have like a skill, but also that I'm being guided. And sometimes you get cards that are like, you're kind of thinking, hmm, that's not, necessarily what I wanted to see but you have to take that on board because it's not just cherry picking your your destiny and saying oh, I only want to hear the good ones something that I would say though to people who are interested in using tarot or oracle in you know in their spiritual path alongside manifesting is to number one be aware of why you're doing the tarot reading are you doing the tarot reading because you feel powerless? Are you doing it because you're clutching at straws? You're pushing for a manifestation. You're desperate to know when that man's gonna show up in your life. Because if you're doing it from that place, it's not coming from a place of fun energy. It's coming from a place of I'm lacking something. I'm wanting something to happen. And you're not trusting the universe and you're not trusting yourself and you're not trusting the path because you're so focused on just like, I constantly need this feedback. I constantly need this reassurance. Whereas if you're trusting it, you don't necessarily really need to be looking at tools like this and asking for wider, bigger answers. The main factors and things that people come to me that they wanna work on usually are things like money mindset um, or a business mindset, but a lot of people um, don't believe that they can create a business that they want, particularly creative people. A lot of creative people have a belief that they can't make money from their art or um, that it's going to be a really hard road. They're told, they're like, this is going to be so hard for you um, because, you know, artists don't make money, for example. It's, it's just things that they've been told. So usually it's about working on what's at the core that's energetically holding somebody back from whether it's love money, career, could be even health, uh, and then releasing those limiting beliefs and then programming them with new ones that actually allow them to show up and to thrive. Because law of attraction isn't just sitting on our bums and everything comes to us. Yes, stuff can come to us, but it's also the energy we put out into the world. So there is the action element. And so many people just are afraid to take that action on their dreams. So it's the energy to work. And then it's also then setting those plans and those goals and saying, right, this is the, then the steps. If there's anybody out there that is looking to get into, whether it's coaching or specifically manifestation coaching, make sure that whatever area you're coaching in, is something that you're passionate about. So if, you want to coach women on how to get a divorce or the process of divorce and confidence, that's great. Just make sure it's something that you are happy talking about and that you're passionate about and that you can live on a daily basis. And just that you're not projecting your own experiences onto a client. One of the reasons why a lot of us get into coaching is because we've walked this path and we've experienced a healing and we wanna pass that knowledge on. We wanna be able to help other people in the same way, but it's just accepting that perhaps somebody else's path is not your own path. And we do not, we do not all have the same backstory. And just so that is an element of just professional integrity is not passing your own projections and your beliefs onto somebody else. I am so passionate about my career because I know that manifestation works. I mean, the principle of manifestation is what you energetically want, calling that into your reality, creating that through your actions, through your thoughts, through your beliefs. And over time, I've really become a passionate believer that at a subconscious level, what we believe we are is what we attract. It's how we show up in this world. And it's the results that I've had, not just in my personal life, but seeing people actually transform, seeing them go after their dreams, 
in the action sense, but then actually seeing just the magic, like the little things that show up in their world that you can't explain, things that come in unexpectedly, the way stepping stones align for them and everything's just working out. That is so powerful to watch and, and to just see that unfold. I couldn't not be passionate about it. My name is Esther and this is my voice.